Hello, in this section I'm going to look at minimization problems, um, otherwise known as the duality problem. So um, we have this problem where it says minimize w is equal to 10y1 plus 8y2 subject to y1 plus 2y2 is greater than or equal to um, 2 and y plus y2 is equal greater than or equal to 5 with the constraints that both them uh, y1 and y2 are non-negative. So <clears throat> what we'll do is um, we'll just kind of call this the, this is what we call the dual problem. Actually, sorry. Um, this is called the primal problem. Okay, now the first step that you would need to, um, actually, let's say it like this. Okay, so just to clarify, um, whenever you're looking at a minimization problem, they have to be of the form where you have that the constraints are what we say greater than or equal to. So we have a n uh, x n is greater than or equal to b. Now, of course, um, for minimization problems, we use different subscripts, and um, well, we use different variables like y1 and so on. So, um, the fact that I wrote x1, try to ignore that. So, um, and of course, you have that there's always an objective function that you're dealing with. Um, so, in this case, they use a w instead of a z. <clears throat> now. Minimization problems are probably uh, the most time consuming because you have that we need to basically create a matrix. So we create a matrix and we just call it A for example. And we write that matrix where we put basically the coefficients. So like one, two, two, um, one, one, 5, and then we have 10, 8, and then we always put a 0. Okay, so this is going to be uh, like this. So we're going to just separate the constraints uh, from the objective function. Now the next part of this is that we're going to find the transpose. So if you recall a way long time ago, uh, in terms of like you know operations on matrices, we had that we can transpose these matrices. So we have uh, one, two, two, one, one, five, and then we have uh, ten, eight, and then we have a zero. Now. What this does is it basically rewrites the problem. So here we have that now we're going to look at, this is where it gets a little interesting or funny. So we have now that we're going to maximize z equals to 2x1 plus 5x2 and then we're going to say that this is subject to um, x1 plus x2 is less than or equal to 10. And then we have 2x1 plus x2 is less than or equal to 8. And then we have x1 is greater than or equal to 0, and x2 is greater than or equal to 0. Now, you might feel like, what just happened? Like, you know, we went from one problem to another, and that's true. So this is called the dual problem. The logic to this is that basically the optimal value for z is also the optimal value for w. So you may have that the ordered pairs do not match, but the optimal value will. So it's almost like saying, let's just go ahead and do another problem now, which is exactly what we're going to do. So we can go ahead and set up the tableau from here because we know that we need to introduce slack variables. So we have um, 1, 2, negative 2, uh, 1, 1, 
and then we have negative 5, and then we have uh, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, and then we have a 10, an 8, and a 0. Let's just move that over there. Okay, so <clears throat> and we're just going to separate this. Now, interesting enough, we do have that this is x1, x2, and then the select variables actually are the y1, the y2, and then you have your z, and then you have, uh, we'll just call this b. Now, that being said, the solutions actually will appear at the bottom. Okay, so we just have to uh, be aware of that, that uh, whatever these change to, those are going to be the solutions. So right now, um, right, so we have that, um, we're going to do the same process. We're going to go ahead and look for the most negative indicator, which in this case is the second column. But then we're going to look for the smallest quotient. So you have 10 and 8. So the smallest quotient is in row 2. So we have that the pivot element is right there. We can uh, circle that. OK, now the way of which that we can do this is that we can just go ahead and say, well, let's just go ahead and subtract or multiply by 5. So we'll just say that this is going to be 5 times row 2 plus row 3 to give us a new row uh, 3. And then from there, we can actually say that uh, we can do row 1 minus row 2 to give us a new row uh, 1. So our next step is going to be where we go ahead and we just update the tableau. So we know that basically that the second row remains unchanged. So we have 2, 1, 0, 1, 0, 8. So when you multiply by 5, you get 5 uh, times 2 is 10, minus 2 is 8. That's a 0, that's a 0, that's a 5. And uh, that's going to be a 1. And then you have 40. Now this top row is just subtracting. So you have negative 1, 0, uh, 1. And then you have uh, negative 1. And you have 0. And then you have 2. Now, basically, uh, we have that this is a little interesting, specifically because of the fact that we have that there are no more negative indicators, which basically means that we found our solution. So we found our solution um, to be that the optimal solution has to be that um, the optimal solution says that, yeah, that uh, z is equal to 40. It also says that uh, x1 is equal to 0. We also have that uh, x2 is equal to uh, 8. Now this is where things get a little uh, weird. Okay, so we have that technically that y1 is equal to 0 and that y2 is equal to uh, 5. And then from here, remember that our p was what we were, or w. w is essentially the same value that we got for z, which is 40. Now, if we go back to the original problem, um, yeah, so if we go back to the original problem, um, we have that if we plug in 0 and then 5, we get 40. So <clears throat> it, it works out the same. Now the other thing that I will point out is that um, this right here, the z, or the w, so this must be 1. So once you have that, um, once you have that there is no more negative indicators, but let's say that this was a 3, then you'd be dividing everything by 3. If this was a 5, you would be dividing everything by 5, which means that the answer would be technically 0, 1, 
and then 8. So this must be 1. And then you have that there are no more negative indicators. Okay, so this is the dual uh, problem. Okay, so um, you can still graph it if you want to. So the answer is over here, uh, where we have the ordered pair 0, 5, and then 40. Now, interesting enough, you can actually compare both of the uh, feasible regions as it relates to the dual problem or by looking at the primal problem but you essentially uh, will just get the same optimal value uh, as stated before. Now let's look at another problem where we try to go from the primal problem to the dual problem. Okay, so I went ahead and prepared this problem. So we want to find the dual problem and remember that Basically, this is given as what we call the primal problem. So the steps of which that we would have to take is that we would have to formulate a matrix. So we have that A is a matrix where we have the coefficients are as follows, 1, 1, 1, uh, 100, 2, 1, 0, 50. And then we have that the um, <clears throat> you have that the constraints would be two, one, uh, three, and then zero. Okay. Now, basically, this is giving us a matrix of which that you have that you need to transpose it. So, we find the transpose of this matrix, and we find that. That matrix is going to be 1, 2, 2, 1, 1, 1. Uh, this is going to be 1, uh, 0, 3. And then we have 100, 50, and then 0. Now, basically, this is giving us a set of inequalities. Um, it's giving us a set of inequalities that. Uh, we can use to formulate the dual problem. Okay, so we have that we can from here say that you have maximize uh, z equals to um, 100x1 plus 50x2 and then we have that this is subject to okay so we have uh, x1 plus 2x2 is less than or equal to 2. Um, we have x1 is added to x2, that's less than or equal to 1. And then finally we have that uh, x1, <clears throat> x1 has to be uh, less than or equal to 3. So this is subject to that x1, x2 are all uh, non-negative. So you have that these are all non-negative. Um, OK, now basically this is the answer in terms of finding the dual problem. So this is the dual, um, yeah, so this is the dual problem. Now, if you wanted to maximize this, then you can, um, which in this case, like you would formulate the tableau using um, the same method, so you would have, like, um, in this case, you have 1, 1, 1, and then you have negative 100, then you have uh, 2, 1, 0, negative 50, and then you have, uh, let's see, you have that there's three select variables, so you have 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0. And then you have um, that there's going to be um, uh, 2, 1. Actually, it's uh, it's the next, uh, yeah, it's 0, 
zero, zero, one, then it's going to be uh, two, one, three, and then you have zero. So imagine if you had to basically uh, optimize um, this entire tableau by using the pivot row operations you would have to basically know that okay that's x1 that's x2 um, this is y1 this is y2 this is y3 this is z and then this is your constant b now if you go ahead and you find the optimal solution um, basically you're gonna find that the solution is a hundred so you're gonna find that the min of uh, w is equal to the min, or in this case the max, the max of z. So you're going to find that z is equal to 100, followed by that you know x1 is equal to 0, and x2, actually not, not uh, it's equal to 1, and then x2 is equal to uh, 0. So that's going to be kind of like the solution to that problem by using the uh, simplex tableau method, uh, or the simplex method. <clears throat> and then from there, you'll also find out that the the uh, w the w is going to be equal to a hundred, but it's going to be such that y one is zero, y two is a hundred, and then you have that. Um, you have y3 is going to be 0. So these are the solutions to the primal problem. But you'll see that basically that um, there is no difference in the optimal values. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. And then remember that I said that when you uh, do the row operations that you must have that this right here will be 1. So eventually, you'll probably see that once you find the simplex tableau, that you're going to see that the bottom row is like 0, 100, 0, and then it's going to say 1. And then over here, it's going to say also 100 uh, in terms of like, you know, what's the optimal value.